All right, guys, this is the Honda Beat and it's finally in the shop. So in the last video, I made these taillights with LEDs and a new acrylic lens. And a lot of you guys love the video, but what a lot of you guys didn't like is that the reverse lights are also red. So what we're gonna do today is we're going to 3D scan the whole bumper, or maybe not the whole bumper, just a portion of it. And I'm going to make um, something to kind of sit in here inside the bumper and use some LEDs that I got from Amazon to kind of project light out and I'll have proper reverse lights. And the ones that were originally wired to the tail lights will probably just be more brake light for safety. Before we can start 3D scanning, we have to dull out the reflective parts of the areas that we want to scan. So basically we'll use um, some foot powder spray and we can use pretty much anything. And what we got is just something from Tarjay that just sprays on and can wipe off whenever we're done. So I'm gonna set you guys down and kind of spray this off. All right, now that the foot powder spray is all dried up, I went ahead and put some painter's tape on the tail light so it could cut down on the reflectiveness of the lens. And then we're gonna use this masking tape and cut it into thinner strips and put it in random patterns so it'll help the 3D scanner kind of pick up a little bit more edge geometry here and there while it's scanning. So let's get to it. We'll have the links to all the things we use down in the description. And while you're there, don't forget to hit the like button because it really helps our channel grow and make more videos like this. Also, it's a nice thing to do, so thank you. Oh, sorry. All right, we have all of the panels that we want to get scanned masked up with masking tape. It's just kind of in random patterns really. Floating around in random patterns, devoid of meaning. So now we can get the 3D scanner set up and get to scanning. What do you think? The scanner we're using is Creality CR Lizard. It's great at capturing details on small objects, especially when it's used on the turntable that it comes with but it struggles with large areas with minimal peaks and valleys, hence why we had to add tape and random patterns on the bumper and the quarter panel. With a little bit of patience, it's a very capable tool and produces usable 3D models. It's definitely worth having around in the shop. And now, on to scanning. Once I finished scanning, I cleaned up the point cloud on CR Studio and removed the floating bits and cut off some areas that aren't needed to cut down on the file size a bit. Once I was happy with it, I processed it and threw the OBJ file into Fusion 360, and I got to work designing. The 3D model ended up looking like this, and with my confidence that this would look good on the car at like a solid 72%, I sent it over to the 3D printer. Alright, now everything is done printing, and I think it came out pretty good. So I'm just going to uh, remove all the supports, and then uh, yeah, we'll see how it fits. Here
here's a closer look at the housing. I have the LED pods already mounted on there and I went ahead and shortened up the wiring harness and added a waterproof connector. So in case I ever wanted to service it, it'll be easy to take on and off. I printed this with ASA filament, so it should be good for the outdoor environment and uh, heat resistant and all that fun stuff. And I could have gone ahead and vapor smoothed it and did a little bit more post-processing so you don't see the layer lines, but I kind of like that aesthetic, especially for version one. I think I'm going to keep it for now. To mount it onto the bumper, I'm using this 3M double-sided tape, and it's the same stuff that they use to mount to emblems and other things on bumpers and skirts and stuff like that, so it should be plenty strong to hold on. Before we're able to test fit the print, I'm going to go ahead and take off all the masking tape and the foot powder spray. Nice. All right, so I'm just gonna put a little bit of painter's tape around the area, because we do need to cut into the bumper, so don't want to ruin everything else around it. Gonna tape it up generally. Should be good enough. And good enough. I also printed this guy. It's a little template without the internal components of it, just so I could mock it up to the bumper and be able to mark out where I needed a cut. I think ideally I could have just extended it so it could kind of register on the lip of the bumper and on the side of the flare so it could position it perfectly, but you know. I'm not a smart man. With the bumper all marked up, I'm going to cut out the hole using a jigsaw which probably isn't the best tool for the job, but it's what I have on hand. And the bumper is just made of ABS, so it shouldn't be too bad. So hopefully I don't totally screw this up. All right, that worked out way better than I thought it would. Now I have a gaping hole in my bumper which is okay. And now that we have the hole cut out, it just sits in there like so. I'm gonna finish it up by removing the painter's tape and installing this with 3M double-sided tape. Then I'll run the wires to the lights so it comes on when it's in reverse. And then I have to do all of these steps over again on the other side. So I'll be right back. With all that, this is what they look like. A functional 3D printed reverse light mod for the beat. I think these came out so good and these are bright as fuck. I definitely won't be backing up in the dark anymore. If you like this video or learned something new, consider subscribing. And leave a comment down below and let me know how you think these came out. Thanks for watching.